Bond Bulls have retaken control in the last quarter of 2023, heading into next year. We've got to focus on rates and now cuts expected by the market. Joining us from BlackRock, Steve Lapley is a global co-head of iShares Fixed Income ETF. Steve, welcome back to the Schwab Network. Thanks, Oliver. Hope you're doing well today. Appreciate that. Uh, I know you guys are doing pretty well. It's a pretty big month uh, for bonds. <laughs> Tell me just kind of firstly here to set the stage for our convo, how you guys have uh, seen the market's big shift. Yeah, I think this is, you know, we, we had quite a sharp run up in yields, um, as, as you know, heading uh, heading from, you know, into, into the end of October and then that reversed very, very sharply. Um, you know, I think there was some technical element to that, um, especially in October. Um, so I think we were expecting it to come off somewhat, but this has been a significant repricing in, in expectations. So, you know, the market's pricing in, um, you know, Almost twice as many cuts as the as the uh, as the Fed itself, and so that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. They are pushing back a little bit. Uh, some of the speakers are starting to come out uh, and try to walk that back, but um, we're we're a little bit at a differential here between what the market wants or thinks will happen and what the Fed's saying will happen. Uh, but nonetheless, we saw um, a huge rally, obviously, um, you know, over the past month. Um, flows have been very very strong across the board. Um, year to date, uh, we've taken in uh, over 110 billion globally, uh, 70 billion in the U.S. As you know, much of that's been in treasuries, but we've also seen a fair amount uh, come into to broad fixed income and I bonds, which is our uh, defined maturity suite. So a lot of good, um, you know, allocations across the board as people are stepping out of cash. Okay, and uh, there's always that kind of like uh, Rorschach for bonds test, uh, especially when I think about the short end where folks have been very happy to collect the yield, uh, but now obviously that's changed quite a bit. So how did those uh, mindsets offset from an investor's perspective where people might go, okay, I'm, you know, maybe I don't want to you know, do my tea bill and chill anymore. I'm not getting quite as much, but uh, my principal is rising too. So how does that work in the most investors' minds? Well, it's it's pretty interesting. It's very hard to time these things. And I think, um, you know, I looked just uh, just the other day and very quietly 60-40 is up in the mid-teens um, yeah. as a return. You know, the ag itself on the broad market benchmark for, for bonds is up almost 5%. Um, so, you know, it just sort of happened very, very quickly. And I think that's why it's it's more important just to have a, a very durable allocation. Another one I think that people sort of slept on this year was high yield. Um, that's up over 10% um, so far this, this year. So that's interesting. A lot of investors shunned that asset class for most of the year. Um, and it's and it's rebounded, uh, you know, pretty well. It's, it's turning in a solid performance. So, you know, what we think as investors should definitely be looking ahead to 2024. Yields are still, um, despite the retracement from 5%, still a tremendous opportunity uh, for income. So we think people should be allocating back into fixed income uh, broadly. Um, as you know, we launched um, another active fixed income fund, BRTR, last week. Um, so we think you know the more durable portfolios have elements of both index and active. We now have uh, two of these funds uh, from Rick Reader's team. BINC was the first one. Uh, that's taken in over 300 million um, in a very short period of time. And now we have BlackRock Total Return, BRTR, uh, to complement that. So it's a great uh, opportunity in fixed income right now. And we, uh, we think investors should really look uh, to step out of cash and, and get allocated. Uh, BINC has had almost half a billion of flows since inception in the late spring of this year. Uh, the new one is active as well, BRTR. So this is the ideal is that you're going to get maybe a little bit more bang for your buck. There's some bond picking. There's some, uh, what, like 60% is outside treasuries, I think I saw. Yeah, I think the the idea is to give investors the flexibility um, to to be able to capitalize on some of the more um, you know unique opportunities in the market. And so I think what Rick Reeder and and Dave Rogel on that team are are very good at is finding these opportunities and being able to allocate very quickly into them. And so I, you know again, we think a durable portfolio would have elements of, of a core index. So you could use AG or IUSB at the core. And then now we have these active products as, as an opportunity to add enhanced returns around that. Um, so we think that will be, you know, the, mo the more resilient approach um, for, uh, for next year. As, as you know, we're, we're still not um, entirely in the clear here. We could still have, um, you know, some bumps on the way down in inflation. So we think it's important to have a, a robust and resilient portfolio. 
and it's pretty high quality in terms of uh, credit quality, right? It seems like uh, investment grade, uh, you've got residential mortgages, agency mortgages, a high yield is like way down, like less than 2% uh, in here. Non-agency mortgages, less than 2% too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the idea behind BRTR is to is to outperform the aggregate uh, by allocating into these sectors when when there is opportunity and when uh, when the timing makes sense. It will be mostly um, these sectors that you see in the aggregate, but um, you know we will have the ability to opportunistically lean into sectors where where there's a lot more value. Got it. Okay, a uh, few triple Bs in there, like fifteen percent seems about as juicy as it, as it gets. If uh, you know on the risk spectrum side. Uh, Steve, thanks for the breakdown. Always appreciate your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thanks, Oliver. Absolutely. Steve Labley, Global Co-Head of iShares Fixed Income ETFs at BlackRock, BRTR, the Rick Reader Managed Total Return Bond Fund.